Hello, in this video I will show you how to get an optimized grip design using the topology optimization capabilities of Ensys Mechanical. Most of the time uh, we will use topology optimization for weight reduction and often the resulting geometry needs to be manufactured using 3D printing technologies. However, there are some ways that we can use topology optimization during the design of ribs and this is what I will show you today using Ensys Mechanical and Space Glue. So let me so let me start by showing you the initial design that we will call the baseline model. So it's a simple geometry where 10 mm ribs were equally distributed. Uh, the part is in aluminum and is fixed here on the three holes and a uniform pressure was applied on the, on the back. And we have done a static structural analysis and also a model analysis to get the natural frequencies. So the main results are shown here. So we have a maximum total deformation of about one millimeter, and the first natural frequency uh, was uh, around 400 hertz. Then, to find the optimized rib layout, a topology optimization analysis was carried out, where uh, an extrusion manufacturing constraint was added in order to get a constant cross section along a specific extrusion direction. Also, a multi-objective analysis was carried out in order to first minimize the structural compliance and seconds also to maximize the first natural frequencies of the of the plate. And, and then the optimized faceted geometry was sent to students to space claim for their geometry reconstruction process. And with a few mouse clicks, we were able to recreate a solid geometry that was ready to, to simulate using the same uh, boundary condition as the initial design. So this is what we, we have here. And as you can see, the result shows that the maximum total deformation uh, decreased by 32%. When compared to the initial design and we were also able to increase the first natural frequencies by 38 percent and all this was done using the same amount of a material just better uh, distributed so now let's uh, let's open ensys uh, workbench and i will show you the overall workflow so let's first insert an engineering data system then i will include a static structural and uh, a model system that will share the same geometry mesh and engineering data so this is going to be my uh, baseline model where I will have the, the baseline geometry with the equally distributed ribs. Then I will insert another static structural system along with another model system. And this, these two systems will be used for the, the topology optimization analysis. So I will then insert a topology optimization system and I will drag this onto the solution cells a solution cell of the model so that way I will share the engineering data cell the geometry cell and the model cell and I will transfer the result of the model to the setup of my topology optimization and I will manually do the same thing for the static structural so drag the solution of the static of the static structural on the setup cell of the topology optimization then once the topology optimization analysis will be completed will I will create a standalone geometry system where I will send the, the result of the topology optimization into the geometry. So this is going to be the transfer from the faceted body into, into space plane. In this cell, I will work on the geometry reconstruction process. And then I will simply, again, link a static structural and a model analysis to perform the, the validation. And still also by linking the engineering data, so all the, 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 the same material properties will, will be used. So this is just an idea of the, the overall workflow we will use during this, this video. So let's go into the, the, the details of, uh, of each step and let's start with the, the baseline model. So if we directly open, uh, open Mechanical, we can first have a look at the, the baseline geometry where with the uh, equally distributed ribs. So like I showed you in the presentation, the, the model, the, the setup is very simple. So we have a multi-body part made of aluminum alloy we have applied three fixed support on the three holes here. There's a pressure that was applied on the back. And this is the setup for the static structural. And the same fixed support was applied for the, the model uh, analysis. So everything in this analysis is, uh, is linear with respect to the geometry, the material, and there's no uh, connection. And we can just have a quick look at the, the total deformation plot and also the, the first uh, mode shape for the, this natural frequencies of about 416 hertz. The, the next step is the topology optimization simulation. Sometimes and even most of the time to do so we will simply link a topology optimization system to the baseline simulation, this one. But in this case we will not do that uh, because as you can see here in the in the topology optimization simulation that we were about to do 
we will have to define a design region that extends to the whole area of the, the plate right here, which is the, the volume in green. So that means that we will need to go back in, in space claim and create this geometry, which didn't exist in the baseline simulation. So basically it means that we will have to replace the ribs by the volume in green and rerun the baseline case. Um, so this simple geometry modification can we uh, can be done in, in space claim and we can just control select the static structural and the model and do uh, duplicate. We can also relink the engineering data and open uh, space claim to quickly edit the geometry. So inside space claim we will simply first suppress for physics the original rib and then we can uh, hide this part and unshare the, the topology. And then we can just reactivate or activate for physics the new design region that was already prepared. And then we can simply reopen uh, mechanical. And here we simply have to make sure that the material assignment was done. So we will reassign the aluminum for the design, the, the design region. Uh, we will create some, some connections. So I will just insert a connection group and just with the right click create uh, use the, the, the tool to get automatic connections. So here I have a bounded contact region that was created between uh, my plate and my uh, design region. And that's that's pretty much it. So we can go on model and just do a right click and solve the, the, the whole model. And once the model is solved, the, the results are not very important here so because they don't have any kind of physical sense since uh, we have this whole plate, uh, this whole volume included in the in the design. So we can just go back on the workbench project schematic and insert a topology optimization system. So again, just uh, drag and drop the topology optimization system over the solution cell on the model and manually drag the solution cell of the static into the topology optimization. So that way we will be able to run a topology optimization analysis based on the static structural and also the, the model uh, analysis in the same time. So we can open the topology optimization system and begin the setup, which will be quite short. So under uh, optimization region, we will rescope the design regions to be the body embedded inside the backplate only. So we are making sure that the design region is only this volume. And we will also not define any exclusion region. So we just change the define by uh, geometry and there is no selection. That means that all the matter inside the design region can be removed. In terms of the, the objective, everything is already set up properly. So on the first line, the goal is to maximize the frequency of the first mode shape. And on the second line, the objective is to minimize the compliance of the static, of the static structural system based on the, the first load step. And we also have winning factors for both lines that is set to one. That means that these two objectives will be uh, treated uh, equally. Under the, the response constraint, so we will set the person to retain to 20%. This value corresponds to the same amount of mass that was used for the initial rib design. So the goal of this topology optimization is not weight reduction, but rather better optimizing the, the mass distribution uh, among the, the design region. Um, so we could now run this analysis without any other constraint, but since we want to have a new uh, rib design, we must add an extrusion manufacturing constraint. And this constraint will force the optimized geometry to have a constant cross section along a predefined axis. So, so with this constraint, we will simply set the extrusion regions to be parallel to the global Z axis. So these were the, the main step to follow for the topology optimization system setup. So we can now hit solve and wait. So approximately two hours later, uh, 30 uh, iteration were, were done. So we can uh, view the result for the, 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 the final shape under the topology density uh, result. We can also uh, animate the, the result to see the evolution of the, the mass during the optimization process. But now the next step of this simulation is to validate if the new geometry meets our uh, design criteria. But before that, we will first have to reconstruct the, the geometry, and this will be done inside space code. So, so let's go back on the workbench project page, where we will insert a standalone geometry system. 
into which we will send the result of the topology optimization system. And now we simply have to uh, re-update the, the result of the topology optimization and refresh the geometry cell and open space clean. So as you can see, the optimized uh, geometry is, a, is an STL file. So if I just hide this part and I zoom in, this is a faceted uh, data. And this is the case for all the topology optimization result analysis. So the next step is to convert back this faceted geometry into a solid body. And this will be very simple to do with a software like uh, Spacecraft. So let's first create a plane located at the mid distance between the new ribs. So I'll go under the design. I will just select two parallel faces and click on the plane. And then go under the, the tool ribbon and use the extractor feature. I'll select my plane and click complete. And as you can see, if I hide the faceted body, I have a bunch of curves made of line and arts that were uh, created. So the, the next step now is just to, uh, we can go under the design and do a box select over all these curve and use the, the fill tool. So uh, a surface will be created. We can also just remove the small surface in the middle since it's not very useful for us. We, and we can now just uh, pull the, the face to create the, the solid body. So I'll just control click the four faces and hit pull. And I'll say pull up to this face. And also another pull up to this face right here. So I'll just delete a couple of things that we don't need. So the curves, we don't need this, the plane anymore. And also the, um, the, the, the design region also, I can just suppress it for, for physics. And now we can go back to the workbench project page where we will insert again, a static structural system based on that geometry and a model system also. I'll link the engineering data here. So we will have the same material properties. And then I just have to uh, open a mechanical. So in these two systems, we will simply replicate the boundary condition that were used in the baseline model. That is some uh, fixed support here on the tree, uh, on the tree hole. I'll do a, also a drag and drop on model. So the same fixed support will be applied. Uh, this is also a pressure here of uh, 20.25 MPA. Uh, I'll make sure that my material assignment is made correctly. So I want to have the uh, aluminum alloy. Uh, I'll also create some uh, automatic connection. So with this tool, so I have a couple of bounded connection that were, were set automatically. Uh, I can just set an element size of five millimeter. This is basically the, the element size I've used in the previous analysis. And now we are uh, good to go. So we can just go again on this project and just hit solve. So after solving, so let's look at the total deformation and maybe also the, the different mode shape. So I'll just create the mode shape result and uh, evaluate these results. Also can do the rename based on definition in order to get the, the natural frequencies here, evaluate the total deformation. And then we can, uh, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. So let's first take a look at the, the mass of both parts. So the baseline had a mass of about 7.06 kilogram. And if we look at the mass of this part right here, we have about 7.09, which is, like I said, the, the same thing. So, but this is with the intent. And now we can uh, just look at the, the total deformation plot for, for, for both, uh, for both results. But there's a, another way other than this side by side comparison. And I will show you how to, to do this using, um, ANSYS viewer. So what we will do, we will simply uh, export the, the result as an ANSYS viewer file, the AVZ file format, because ANSYS viewer is a, is a free software. And this can be quite useful if your colleague or customer don't have access to ANSYS, but would like to review the result. So we'll uh, export the result of the total de deformation as an AVZ file format. We will do the same thing here. And we can uh, now just open uh, ANSYS viewer. So with ANSYS Viewer, let's first uh, create uh, two viewports. And on the, the first one, we will simply open the, um, the total deformation result with the extrusion. And on the second one, we will simply import the, the same result, but for the, the baseline uh, simulation. And then we can also just activate the synchronized uh, viewport. So now we can 
do uh, comparison with this uh, free software of the, the total deformation. And we can first see that this part is less compliant with approximately 0.7 uh, millimeter, which is approximately uh, like 32% uh, stiffer. And if I go back in my uh, presentation here, I'd show you that, okay, so we had like a part that is 32% stiffer from a static structural point of view, but also 38% stiffer from the, 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 the model point of view. Um, so this is what I basically want to show you, but before I leave you, I just would like to uh, quickly show you the, the result of the optimized geometry if the extrusion manufacturing constraint was removed. So this is the same exact analysis uh, without the extrusion uh, constraint. So you can see that the geometry is much different and have this organic shape. Uh, the reconstruction of this solid body from this faster geometry will be a bit more challenging than the previous case where we only had to extract some curve. But if you would like to learn more about a seamless workflow to reconstruct this uh, geometry, I would invite you to go on a tips and tricks video that is available on, on Symmetry, which is named, which is titled Solid Body Generation for Topology Optimization Results Part 2. And again, after taking this geometry, uh, this solid geometry, and reapplying the exact same load condition as the baseline model, we can see that now the total deformation has decreased by 40% when compared to the baseline model. And also we're able to increase the, the first natural frequency by also 46%. Uh, percent. So to summarize all of this, we can compare all three geometries and we can clearly observe the effect of adding the constraint to the optimization process. So by enforcing the software to have a uniform cross section along a direction, the optimized geometry is not as good as the one with no constraint. So it can be fair to say that the part on the right is kind of the most optimized geometry with respect to our topology optimization system. And adding uh, more constraint to the simulation will simply lead to a less optimized set. However, it's kind of fair to say that the part here will be uh, easier to, to manufacture. And finally, I will just leave you with the slide that gives you an overview of the complete workbench project schematic, where all the steps are there. So starting from the baseline, going to the topology optimization, the, recon the geometry reconstruction, and the validation for both geometry with and without the, uh, the extrusion. So I hope this video was useful. So thank you and, and have a good day.